Hello, everyone, and um, welcome to this presentation of what is Ethereum Classic. This presentation was shown on the afternoon tea and Ethereum Classic uh, online meetup on April 20th. And this is just a recording for in, ca in, in case uh, any of you were unable to attend and um, would like to feel free to share this to other people who want to know what Ethereum Classic is. So Ethereum Classic is a peer-to-peer -peer payment network and a platform for decentralized applications. Its sacred symbol is ETC. Uh, a lot of people like to call this uh, Etsy. And um, you know, if you're a Linux system administrator, kind of get that Etsy. Anyways, the uh, liquid supply is, is uh, about 126 million Etsy and the max supply is uh, fixed at 210 million Etsy. And Many, and many people aren't aware of this, but Ethereum Classic does have a, a supply cap, just like, um, you know, similar to Bitcoin, except in Ethereum Classic's case, the supply is about 210 million. Um, and the consensus mechanism is proof of work. So, you know, we have uh, miners on the network that process transactions, uh, much like you might be familiar with uh, Bitcoin proof of work. Um, and you might also, a lot of people like to call it ETH Classic or Classic Ether. Those are common uh, ways people just uh, reference Ethereum Classic. So how did Ethereum Classic become to be? Well, many don't know this, uh, but, you know, Ethereum Classic was created during the DAO hard fork, which is a contentious hard fork on the Ethereum network. So Ethereum Classic and Ethereum actually share the same Genesis block but it was when the DAO hard fork came along that, you know, they became split chains. So the DAO hard fork was basically a, it was a, it was basically a ICO or crowd sale launched on Ethereum back when it was one chain and the ICO had some vulnerabilities. It was exploited. Uh, these DAO ICO investors lost a lot, a lot of money. And one side of the community said, uh, hey, we should have a hard fork and return that, and in that hard fork, return the money back to those DAO ICO investors. This would uh, break the original Ethereum agreement and obviously it'll break uh, blockchain immutability, immutability. And arguably, you can say censorship because, you know, is the Ethereum network responsible for uh, investors making bad decisions or poorly written smart contracts? You know, a lot of people could argue yes or no, but on the Ethereum Classic side, it was, hey, these DAO ICO investors, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with te technology. You wrote a bad smart, you wrote a bad smart contract, and um, you should be responsible for those decisions. Um, for example, if you lost your Bitcoin private key, are you responsible for that, or does the Bitcoin have to hard fork your money uh, back to you or something? So on the Ethereum Classic side, took more fundamentalist approach and decided not to fork. And Ethereum forked and returned those DAO ICO investors' money from you know that uh, failed crowd sale. And you know the kind of canonical chain remained Ethereum, uh, or rebranded to Ethereum Classic, and the fork chain uh, continued as Ethereum or ETH. So Ethereum Classic versus Ethereum. This is an interesting one. So ETC and ETH are technically compatible. They're both EVM-based chains. They originate from the same history. And Ethereum Classic has, for the most part, included all the other um, all the other hardcore upgrades as Ethereum. So, you know, as far as latest opcodes and stuff, Ethereum Classic is pretty much up to date with Ethereum. And, you know, they share, they share the same EVM. So all the tooling that you use on Ethereum or Ethereum Classic is all cross compatible. You deploy a dApp on, uh, let's say Ethereum Classic, or you deploy a dApp on Ethereum. You can also deploy it on Ethereum Classic or Ethereum. You can use your same tools like Truffle or Remix, um, you know, to do all the same things on uh, Ethereum Classic. But ETC's main differences, uh, at least to date, are, you know, it has a fixed monetary supply of 210 million ETC. So this was adopted in 2017 
And basically every 5 million blocks, a fifth of the block, uh, the block reward is reduced by a fifth. And, um, and also Ethereum Classic, uh, for the most part, is remaining proof of work for the foreseeable future. And this is different from the Ethereum vision, which is, you know, moving to proof of stake. And, um, you know, on the Ethereum Classic side, I guess you can say a lot of us have more of a Satoshi type of mindset where, you know, we really believe in proof of work. We also believe in fixed monetary supply and digital scarcity. So that leads to a different vision on the Ethereum Classic side versus Ethereum. So to date, there are three main development organizations. You have the Ethereum Classic Cooperative, which is a uh, nonprofit that supports that that that, work, that supports a bunch of core Ethereum Classic projects, and also uh, funds the ETC compatibility in the Hyperledger BaseU protocol providing client. And we also have IOHK, which um, which has a uh, the Mantis team. Um, IOHK actually had an Ethereum Classic team very early on in Ethereum Classic's history, known as Team Grothendieck, and these guys made the first native Ethereum Classic client called Mantis. And they brought that back um, in the past year. And that's that's pretty exciting. So that's uh, known as the Mantis client. And uh, that's something they're working on today. And then we also have Ethereum Classic Labs, which came, which came in 2019. And um, they, they funded a, a few uh, blockchain startups. And they've also... Uh, fund the development for the uh, Corgeth client, which which is a fork of Multigeth. So they're maintaining ETC compatibility in that in that client. So the protocol of providing clients, which I just mentioned in the previous uh, slide. So we have Hyperledger, Basu, Mantis, and Corgeth. Just to give you a gist of each one, you know when you're going to be running a blockchain, you're going to have a node, or you need to be mining. Obviously, you're going to have to have the protocol providing client that could download and sync the blockchain. Um, this kind of, that's kind of that's kind of out of the scope of this presentation, but in short, Hyperledger Basu is uh, part of the, you know the Hyperledger Basu umbrella project, um, where they have many open source blockchain tools, and um, Hyperledger Basu is an Ethereum uh, protocol providing client, and ETC Copper is funding that compatibility in Basu. And what's cool about Basu is it's Apache 2.0 and written in Java. So it's super enterprise friendly. And there's also a lot of, uh, it's also the first client that's uh, has an implementation for the Kekek 256 uh, proposal that's underway for ETC. Then we also had the Mantis client, which is uh, developed by IOHK. So Mantis was the first native Ethereum classic client. And that's also Apache 2.0 and written in Scala. And of course, Corgeth, many people are familiar with um, the Go Ethereum client of families. So that's basically a, uh, Corgeth is basically a fork of Multigeth, which was a, a fork of Geth. So it's pretty much just ETC uh, Geth compatibility and, and Corgeth. And this is the roadmap for 2021. Now, some of these proposals are still under development in the Ethereum Classic Improvement Proposal process, also known as the ESIP process. So we have the Proto Treasury, which will establish uh, formal governance and funding for multiple independent core development teams and the community. And we also have Kekek 256, um, which is a proposed algorithm to change the proof of work. Uh, change the proof of work algorithm to become a majority proof of work network. Now there's a bunch of other benefits to Keka 256, and there's also a lot of more a lot more benefits to the Proto Treasury. Um, and, but I would suggest you go to the etccooperative.org, and we have some good explanations uh, substantiating um, why these proposals, um, you know, are being proposed and why they might, why they're so valuable. We also have checkpointing to temporarily eliminate proof of work attack vectors while the network matures to a point a checkpoint is no longer needed. So as you may, might know, Ethereum Classic was actually a uh, victim to uh, a few 51% attacks ever since the DAO actually. And uh, you know, it's been a minority change since the DAO. 
So Keck Exchange 56 and checkpointing really does is trying to address the minority chain vulnerability and also uh, decouple from that environment entirely and become a majority chain and eventually rely on the security assumptions of proof of work. So those are pretty exciting. But again, uh, I, I would visit etccooperative.org and um, just you'll see some explainers in the blog section of uh, in that site. So how can you participate in ETC? Well, of course, you can create a wallet and start using ETC for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Um, and if you believe it's, if you, you know, you want to use it as a store of value, um, you can do that as well. Um, and mining ETC to process transactions and get rewarded in ETC. So Ethereum Classic is proof of work. So to contribute to the network and get rewarded for it, rewarded for it uh, you could be mining if you wanted to. And also um, you can build decentralized applications such as decentralized exchanges, decentralized finance, uh, NFTs, et cetera. Basically anything that, anything that you, know, you wanna do with a smart contract or have trust minimized applications or trust minimized uh, logic within your applications, you could do that on ETC. Um, you know, and, and just like when I said, you know, ETC is fully compatible with Ethereum. So as far as deploying Solidity code and all that stuff and using MetaMask, you can do that all on ETC. And, um, and finally, be a member of the community. You know, Ethereum Classic is an open source project uh, driven by the community. And there's a bunch of forums and everyone's, everyone's very welcoming. Um, don't be shy. Uh, feel free to engage and participate and collaborate. Um, you know, it's an open source project. Everyone's distributed around the world. And finally, here are some resources that I, I would definitely encourage you to go just to learn more about Ethereum Classic and, and maybe some of the information you're trying to find out there um, just to get dive deep into some of the topics I might have mentioned. So we have ethereumclassic.org and we have the mantisclient.io, which is uh, the IOHK uh, Mantis team site. We also have etccooperative.org, which is the ETC co-op site, and etclabs.org. And also you, you can visit the community GitHub, which is uh, Ethereum Classic. And I provided this link in the slide, which is uh, github.com forward slash Ethereum Classic forward slash awesome ETC, because that's just a, a huge, gigantic awesome list, which is just has so many resources, mining, anything. Just if you want to have a whole index of everything ETC, definitely check out the awesome ETC list. Anyways, um, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like, and share this video. And um, we'll have some more videos diving even deeper to come. Take care.